whenever a crime is done the evidence is never remain the same most of the time the original document is tampered and the forensic team is left with very less evidence to tackle that a number of devices are used and we are going to have a look at one of them this is called electrostatic detection apparatus with the help of this device we can actually figure out what was written on the destroyed paper by reading the impressions on the pages below it and its working is based on the concept of capacitance that's why today we are going to combine physics and forensic science to understand how this device works now before moving on to the capacitance and the working of ESDA we need to clear out some fundamentals and the first one is dielectric these are actually poor conductors of electricity so practically no charge can flow through them but in the presence of external charges or an external electric field a local charge polarization occurs in these types of materials and this property of polarization of a dielectric is measured in terms of permittivity so in short permittivity is the measure of how much a material can be polarized and it is represented by the symbol of epsilon now since every dielectric will have its unique tendency unique behavior the value of permittivity is different for different materials but in general calculations we don't use absolute permittivity of the material instead of that we use relative permittivity which is the ratio of permittivity of material with the permittivity of free space and we have another name for this ratio dielectric constant which is generally symbolized as k now if we rearrange this equation we can say that the permittivity of any material can be written as the product of dielectric constant of the material and the permittivity of free space now is the time we jump onto the capacitance capacitance is the ability of a system to store an electric charge you very well know that and for a system of two parallel plates it is given by epsilon not a by d specifically if there is just the free space in between the plates and if we talk about other parameters a is the area of one of the plates and d is the distance between them now let's take a general case what if we place a dielectric in between the plates when the medium in between is vacuum it is epsilon not a by d where epsilon not is the permittivity of free space now if the medium in between is having a different value of permittivity let's say epsilon then the equation will be epsilon a by d and i think we can take it as a general equation of capacitance where epsilon is the permittivity of the material kept in between these plates and very easily we can write epsilon as the product of dielectric constant of the medium and epsilon not so what we can conclude from these two equations the capacitance changes as we introduce different dielectrics in between the plates and that's why if the area of plates and the distance between them is constant the capacity to store charge will be different for the different mediums in between if the dielectric constant of the medium is more more charge will be held by the capacitor now the working of electrostatic detection apparatus is somewhat similar to that of the parallel plate capacitor the upper surface is made of brass which is commonly called as platen and whenever a person goes for a test at first he will keep the paper on the platen and then cover it with a mylar sheet and this sheet is pulled by the platen through the vacuum pores on its surface 
so that it should be tightly attached with the paper. Now observe the arrangement. We have a stack of mylar sheet, paper and the brass plate. Now let me remind you that we are in a process of building a parallel plate capacitor. So what next? How do we charge a capacitor? We have to apply a potential difference or a voltage across it. And that is what we do in case of this apparatus as well. There is an instrument attached to the apparatus which is called a corona wand. This instrument is at a very high voltage, actually more than 6 kV and is capable of discharging negative charge or negative ions on the mylar sheet. That's why it is moved uniformly over the sheet because of which we have negative charges spread all over it. Now in addition to this, the brass plate is grounded because of which a positive charge is accumulated at its bottom surface just like it happens in a capacitor. Now we have a model of parallel plate capacitor ready for us to analyze. But this will be the picture for a paper which has not been disturbed and that's not the case here. Whenever we write on a notebook, because of the pressure of the pen, the next pages also get the impressions. And that's why the thickness of the paper is comparatively reduced wherever there are impressions. Now if you analyze the regions of the paper where there are impressions, along with the decrease in thickness of the paper, there is an air gap in between the mylar sheet and the paper. Because of which the dielectric constant of that region decreases, which means there is a decrease in capacitance of those regions where there are impressions. And since capacitance is the ability to store charge, these regions will have lesser charge than the other regions. And if you understand the fundamentals of electrostatics, you can easily figure out that because of the presence of lesser negative charge in the areas of impressions, they will have less negative potential as compared to the remaining areas of the paper. So if we denote the potentials as A and B, then we can say that A will be greater than B because more negative means smaller. In the next step, we sprinkle negatively charged toners on the mylar sheet. And since the negative charges travel from lesser potential to more potential, more toner particles are accumulated in the regions of impressions, because of which we can separately see the impressions on the paper. So concept taken, applied and understood. And finally this looks like the end of this explanation. But actually it's not. This was the explanation given by the first manufacturer of this device. But after that, many researches were done and many articles were written and those articles deny that thickness of the paper is the only factor that decides the result of ESDA. That's not the case. Because according to forensic team, whenever we humidify a paper or in short we can say that whenever we add moisture content to the paper, we get better results. So why does that happen? And we are going to answer that in the next part of the show. Till then, take care and thanks for watching.